And here's your stronger door. How are you, my friend? A stronger door. See, but I got my heat. Let's get in those two. Language is good. I can't answer you yet. <laughs> I said, uh, your language is good. It used to be better when I was young with my grandmother oh. and my dad. Oh. Okay, okay. I'll get it back. I believe you will. She makes a man do it. She moves like a man to fuga clicked him. Makes a man do it. I believe the language will come back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want my granddaughter to be Introduced. Well, that is good. That is good. What I'm saying is, uh, is uh, I'm, I'm greeting everybody. How are all of you? And uh, I'm not more in this. Don't go out like I'm doing this. I know what more in my there. Muskogia, but I got more in my there. To my high up, to my high, but I'm doing this. So right now, I'm going to be teaching you guys the language, is what I tried to say. And so, and um, and so, and I'm glad that you guys are wanting to learn, and that, and uh, I want you ever, everybody to understand that uh, we need to get a lot of our young people involved in learning the language. And uh, I hate to sound negative, but it is true that we're losing a lot of speakers. You know, when I yell, you sure got more and some give it unto us. And, and because what I, that's what I said, we're losing a lot of speakers. So, um, but I believe through it all that the language will come back. It will. It's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be a hard road ahead of us. And tonight, I'm going to, I'm going to start off with just two words. And, and from that, we're going to try to build and add on to those two words. And I'm going to show you an example. And then after that, I'm going to open up the, the floor for you guys to actually create your own sentence. And it doesn't really have to make sense, but as long as you try, uh, guys are trying to build onto a sentence, that's what we're really after tonight. And then later on, we will have more advanced classes, and that way we can take you further into the language. And so, right at, at this time, I'm going to start off with uh, everybody say suka, suka, 
Soka. Yeah, there you go. Soka. 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 Yeah. That means pig. And I'm going to use the word dos, it means it is. So if I put this, these two words together, I got sukados, sukados, sukados. Everybody try to say that. Sukados. There, that is sounding good. <laughs> And the literal translation is pig it is, pig it is. And as you can see it, it's, it's backwards from, from English. And, uh, and so a lot of it's going to be backwards. And so the next translation is a paraphrase translation and it's stating it is a pig, it is a pig. Now we want to say suka lustidos. And as you can see, I've added a word that's an adjective to the uh, uh, to the subject here. And I put a color in there. And uh, lustia, uh, it, it means black. But when you read it in the little translation, it's saying pig black it is. And the and the paraphrase translation is going to be, it is a black pig. Mahaya, all I see is your file information. We're not seeing Never. your document. Okay, let me, uh, something not, something's not going on. Let me try this again. Can everybody else see my lesson? No. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Let me get this right here. It's just the file index. I'm gonna try this again. I'm going to try this again. Can anybody see it now? Now we see it. Okay. Everybody, that's good. Forgive me, I'm not being tech savvy tonight, so... We got a, a lady that works here. I mean, I'm she is a she's like a computer whiz. This whole department would probably go crazy if we didn't have her and another guy. I mean, uh, but anyways, okay. I'm gonna back up here. I said sukados pig. It is. It is a pig. It's suka lustidos. Can uh, can I get one of you guys to pronounce that that statement right there? Suka lustidos. That's good. That is good. Can you say the translation? Pig black it is. That's good. It is a black pig. Exactly. Now we're going on to this next statement, and I added the word thako to it. Thako. Everybody say thako. 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 That's good. Thako. Yep. Thako. And um, I'm going to say Sokalasti Thakoros. Sokalasti Thakoros. Everybody try to pronounce it. Sokalasti Thakoros. Hey, yeah, man, you guys are sounding good. <laughs> okay. Without looking at the translation, can anybody? Want to give a try at the uh, at at translating that? I'm going to bring it down here and try to cover it. Uh, 
It is a big black pig. Hey, that's good. Hey, man, Tim Geasley Dos. Man, Geasley Dos C. Your understanding is really good. Right here, I put a, ver uh, a verb into it. And I said, so kalusti thako, awanayados, awanayados, awanayados. I'm explaining what the pig is doing. Anybody want to give a shot? If you got some green book dictionaries, you can look up that word. It'd be awanayada, awanayada. Awanayada. Mm-hmm. Tlako lusty rock, no, Tlako Obanaga, Obanaga dos. Yeah. Sorry. Obanaga that means to smell, to smell. And so what I'm saying is, is I'm using it in a third person sense. That, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, well, the little translation is pig, black, big, smelling it is. A black pig is smelling. That's what I'm saying is smelling. A winaya that means to smell. Now, there's a... Uh, Two statements. As you'll see, I got ya right here. It comes from he and he and and um, and the word ma that means like that. Ya is referencing to this, this. Like if I say, you know, this table here, I can say ya. S. Hojetskin, Hojetskin, I think that's how it's Hojetskin. And so, ma, or if I say that dog, I will say ma'ifa, ma'iva. And so, I, I've chose to use the word, the word yeah in this particular phrase. So I'm saying, yeah, sukalasti saku, yikchin owanaidos, yikchin. Owanaidos, Owanaidos. And, uh, and I put the word yikchin in there. It's got a long E sound with it. And what it's doing, it's an adverb and it's describing, uh, it's, it's describing this verb right here. And it comes from the word yikchida. It means to be strong, to be strong. So if it's an adverb, that means that the pig, the big black pig is, is smelling strongly. It's really smelling or sniffing on something. And so that little translation is going to be this pig, black pig, big. I mean, this pig, black, big, strongly smelling it is. Then the next part is this big, I mean, this black Big pig is smelling strong. I meant to put the word strong in there, and I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm going to do that right now. But, uh, Anybody want to take a shot at pronouncing that Muskogee phrase that I just read? This one right here. Anybody want to? Will you say it again, please? Okay. Yasoka lusty sako yichin awanaidos awanaidos Yasoka lusty sako yichin awanaidos
So you're wanting someone to say that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma yeah. Yeah. So Kalesti Sako. Oh wait. Am I doing the right? Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, so Kalesti Sako. Yikjin o and Ayidos. That's good. That's very good. That's very good. Very good. Now we're going to go on to the to the next sentence. And what I'm doing is I'm showing you how I built it from just saying sukados. And I've added to it to make it a longer sentence. And I'm just hopefully trying to give you guys some examples of what you can do on your own time. Uh, you know, just take uh, two words like, uh, you know, you could say ifados or something or hoktidos or tibanidos. And, you know, just kind of build on that. You can also use doa as a question, too. And so now I'm going to read this next one. I put bahi in there. That means like grass. Yasukulat stifako bahi. Yichin owenai yidos. And um, this pig black, big grass, strongly smelling it is. And, you know, that's how it would literally translate when you literally translate the Muscogee language. And you can see the literal translation is totally different than English. But when I use the paraphrase translation, this black big pig is strongly smelling the grass. That's what I'm saying right there. Somebody want to try to pronounce this statement right here? I can, I can try. <laughs> Man, that is very good. Very good. Very good. A lot of people will get tongue-tied trying to say that. And I know when I first started learning the Muscogee language, I mean, <laughs> I was getting tongue-tied almost every time I turned around trying to you know, pronounce the words and everything else. But you guys are doing very good. Anybody have any questions so far? Does anybody have any questions so far? I think I remember earlier kind of wanting to ask um, when yikjin is used as an adverb, at what point does uh, the en become a long e sound, like en? Like, how do those it's change over? Be, yeah, it's supposed to be the long e sound now when it's an adverb describing, uh, describing the, uh, the verb. And when it's not a long E sound, this is what I was told by another speaker, when it's not a long E sound, it's describing usually the subject or the or noun that's in front of it, like buddy, for example. And, uh, and also a direct, distinct way to make a distinction between uh, an adverb and adjective. Like if I was to say, yasukalasti sako bahi, Yikchit with a T on the end of it, like a T sound. Then I'm saying the grass is strong. You see the difference? Yes, that makes sense, Otto. Or if I say Bahi Yikchin as in a shorty sound, from my understanding and from what another speaker told me, that's also describing the grass instead of being an adverb describing the verb. Do I make myself clear? Yes, for sure. Not okay. 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 And uh, so in this case, it's supposed to be a long E sound, Yichin, Owenaidos, Owenaidos. This black, this black big pig is strongly smelling the grass. I kind of accidentally 
put it in twice here. Now, on this statement, we're going to begin to add to that. And uh, I'm going to read it for you. I'm right here. Yasokolasti sako bahi, yichina wunaidos, moen ivados, moen ivados, ivados. This pig, black, big grass, strongly smelling, it is. And dog is. That's the little translation. I'm going to go to the paraphrase translation. And this says, this blit, excuse me, this black big pig is strongly smelling the grass. And it is a dog. I'm starting with the next sentence. I know that don't kind of make sense, but if you just follow along with me, I believe it will. Oh, anybody want to give a shot at reading that statement right there? This one right here that I just read, the Muskogee line. You guys are doing good. Go ahead, buddy. Yes, so Kalasti, Sako, Pahi Yichin, Owen, 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 I was moan if it was. Oh, hey, moan, Chimbanaga, you let's get a little steam. Damn, when I eat you do a Haramagus. Timon, I eat you do a Uh, I didn't get that. Do you speak the language? Excuse me? I was asking, do you speak the language? Oh, no, uh, not fluently, just uh, like phrases. Oh, words. Because okay. the way you were saying that, brother, I was thinking, man, this guy is probably fluent. <laughs> yeah. I heard it a lot, but I oh, okay. just haven't gotten fluent. Oh, okay. But, man. You sounded like you was a speaker, man. Oh, well, I wish. <laughs> yeah. You and me both, man. I'm working to get there, man. Now, on this next statement, I added to the second part or the second sentence of that. I put Lonnie in there. Now, Lonnie can be in reference to green, yellow, or brown, but in this case, I'm using it in reference to yellow. And uh, I'll say, Yasukulas tifako, bahi yichin, uwanaidos, moan ivalanidos, ivalanidos. And so, what I'm saying is, this pig, black, big grass, strongly smelling it is, and dog yellow is, that's the little translation. This black big pig is strongly smelling the grass and it is a yellow dog. That's what I said on that next statement. Anybody wanna take a shot at pronouncing this Muskogee line that I just read? The guys are doing good. Dan, you sounded like you was a speaker, man. Anybody want to take a shot at reading this line right here? Yes, I'll try it again. All right. Man, you sound like you're fluent, man. I I'm serious. I don't say that about a lot of people. <laughs> you definitely got the reading part, pronunciation down.
Everybody see that word no G in there? No G dos. No G dos. Okay, okay. Say yes, Colostifaco, but he you chin over Naidos. Moen, he fell on it. No G dos. No G dos. On that next statement, where I said moen, he fell on it. No G dos. Does anybody want to take a shot at trying to translate that second part I just read? And the yellow dog is sleeping. Hey, man, you got it, man. <laughs> That's good. You speak, Tony? Monks. Oh, okay. <laughs> this. Man, but you did good, man. And that's good. The yellow dog, and the yellow dog is sleeping. That's what I said. You got it exactly right, brother. This pig, black, big grass, strongly smelling, it is. And dog, yellow, sleeping, is. And that's the little translations. Paraphrase translations are this black, big pig is strongly smelling the grass. And the yellow dog is sleeping. The yellow dog is sleeping. And the yellow dog is sleeping. And so, does anybody have any questions so far? I do. Okay. Um, so would there be, when you say at the end of the sentence, Ovenayudos, period, moen, if falani no jidos. So in English, it would, you know, I don't think it would have a period. It would just be a sentence and a yellow dog is sleeping. But for Creek, it it does have a would have a period at the end. Uh, that's a good point. But I could take out the word dos right there and just shorten the M sound. The M, mo and e falani no dos is basically saying the same thing. And um, uh, in, uh, but, uh, you know, I never thought about that. I really never have. And so I guess to go into another sentence, I wouldn't have to say more and I could just put a period right here and then e falani noji dos and it's basically stating the same thing, if you know what I mean. But, uh, man, that's a good question right there. But in reference to that, I could take out the word dose on that, make it a short letter M, moen, or sometimes they might say mo, e falani no ti dos. You know what I mean? Like the, uh, the pig is uh, smelling the, the grass strongly and the dog is sleeping. I guess it wouldn't make a difference, but um, um, I guess it might be better to, you know, to leave it like this. I don't know, <laughs> but you asked me a, a brand new question. That was a good question right there. Did I make some sense? Yes. Okay. So uh, I was trying to explain that the best I could, but I think it probably would be best to, um, uh, to put a period right there and then to do it like this. And that's maybe one of the ways that the Muscogee language is different. I, I don't know. I, I didn't even understand my answer. But, uh, but you, had, you asked me a completely different question that I haven't been asked before. And so I guess we're learning together. 
Anybody else have any more questions? This bleak, this black big pig is strongly smell of the grass and a yellow dog is sleeping. Now at this time, we're going to actually start a sentence. And I'm gonna let you guys to gather subject and noun. Anybody want to name a noun in Muskogee? Posey, cat. That'd be good. How do you guys want to end it? Do you want to use DOS at the end or do you want to use DOA? DOA. Okay. Ms. Lucinda, are you seeing the document now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is it a cat? Who wants to add to that? What can we put in there to add to that? Bosey door. Musty. Okay, that's good. Okay, cat black is it? Is it a black cat? Is it a black cat? Can we add uh, what other words can we add to that? You guys are doing really good. If we were to add um, ma. As in that, would that make it, is that cat black or is that a black cat? My Bozy, that cat, is that cat black? 
child were to read that. It can be, it's basically meaning the same thing. You just kind of uh, rephrase that question again. I want to make sure. That... Sure. Um, so I think basically I asked if uh, making it ma pose las de doa would be asking, is that a black cat or is that cat black? Basically, to me, they mean the same thing, so it wouldn't matter. Okay. Um, you're just you're just rephrasing it. I was reading something a while ago that um, it was in the Muscogee language, and um, uh, the way I translated it in my mind, it was saying the same thing. But when I read the translation, it worded it differently, but it was still saying the same thing. And uh, and so that's kind of the same example right there. That makes sense, Maro. Yeah. Yeah. Could we put a verb in there? Can there be a verb put in there? And use dashki. Dashki, is that how you say jump? Oh yeah, dashki, yes, yes. Yeah, you sure can. That's good. So now we got my posy lusty dashki doa. Anybody want to read that? Miss Lucinda, you want to read that? Yeah, it's nga. My posy lusty dashki doa. Miss Lucinda, you sound fluent too. That was pretty good. You sound like you're a speaker. It's learning. That's really good. That's really good. Anybody else want to try to read that? That is really good. That's really good, Mrs. AJ. That is really good. Maro. 
you know, one of the main things I want to point out, you can see where the verb is right here. A lot of times in English, uh, in English uh, speaking, the verb is pretty close, closer to the front. But right out here, we got it toward the end. And so, uh, well, in this case, we do get it uh, jumping right here. But um, a verb is always going to be close to the end in Muscogee speaking. Anybody want to add an adverb in there? How that describing how that cat is jumping? I don't know the word, but I think hi should go in there. Okay, okay. Always. There you go. There you go. That's the word, man. Teamwork, huh? Yeah. That is good. Good team. Yes, ma'am. Right here. So in Muscogee speaking, the adverb is in front of the verb, but in the English part, you can see that it's behind the action. Is that black cat jumping high? And when the uh, literal translation of Muscogee is saying that cat black high jumping is it. And so you can kind of see the difference there between English and, and the Muscogee language. And I know when I first started learning, man, a lot of this, that was confusing to me. And, and uh, I try to keep working at it and keep working at it. And, uh, and I know that sometimes it can be confusing. But uh, I believe you guys are going to get it. You guys keep working hard at it and it's going to uh, come better to you. And then before you know it, it's going to be like second nature when a Muscogee speaker is speaking to you and you will understand them right off the bat. I'll never forget one time I was feeling down and out about myself and I was thinking, my God. Now, I actually prayed. I said, God, where am I at? I don't feel like I should, I'm not really getting anywhere. And I went to a, a mound building here on the uh, Muscogee Nation complex. And... Uh, Next thing I know that uh, next thing I know that uh, this Muscogee speaker just started speaking to me. I knew what he was saying right off the bat. It just boom, it hit me. Hey, I can understand him. And then next thing I know, I was conversating back with him, and uh, okay, and that was kind of a confirmation that I was uh, further along than what I thought. And, but if you guys keep on going at it, it's the same things are going to happen to you. You're going to understand speakers right off the bat. And then next thing you know, you'll be conversating with them. Anybody else want to add to that statement? Anybody can read that last Muscogee statement? Will somebody read that last Muscogee statement, if you guys don't mind? Well, 
Ma posi lasti a hole in Tuskedoa. There you go. That's good, man. That is really good, Mr. Dan. That is really good. Can we add any more to that, you guys think? Uh, we could make the cat tall, Mahi. Yeah, that, that'd be good. It's really good. Anybody want to read that statement? The Muskogee part? Ms. AJ, you want to try to read that statement right there? Sure. Ma pose mahet klasti Halloween daskeroa. That's really good, man. That's really good. That is really good. And it's saying it's that tall black cat jumping high. Jumping high. And as you'll notice, I put a T on the end of that word mahi. It's really to describe the subject, which would be posy or the cat saying that it's tall. Anybody else want to try to add to that statement? Bengali, is it scared or scary? Yeah, that can be heck, that can be a uh, uh, scary or scared. Bengali, the Bengali, the uh, oh, scared, yeah. I guess. The scared, scared okay. tall, scared black cat. Okay, there you go. There you go. That'll work. Bengali. Bingley. Yep.
with his sins. Folks, that's really good. That cat scared tall black high jumping is it? Is that tall black scared cat jumping high? I guess it's scared of something. It's scared of something and then and it's causing it to jump. How many of you guys ever seen a cat fight a snake? I've never seen them find snakes, but I've seen them find cucumbers and just leap into the air. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen a cat jump way up in the air and then snatch the bird out of the air and smash it, killed it. Seen that happen. I think I have might have seen cats bite snakes before. But anyways, man, that's that's really good. You guys want to start another sentence? See so if we can get one in before before we end tonight. Who can give me another noun? You need another noun to add to this sentence? Or we're starting well, a new sentence? Well, start. is there a way to say, um, like, Nini, uh, on the road? Like, yeah, the, there it is, is yeah. that tall, black, scared cat jumping high on the road? How would that yeah. work? Yeah. OK, I'm going to show you where to put that in. Um, you would actually put that in front of Toskit. Toski. And because uh, you put O, like, like the letters OH, you put it on the front of the word Toski. That means jumping on, jumping on. And so you put, my understanding, you would put Nini right there in front of O. Nini O Toski. O Toski Doa. Is it like jumping on the road? And uh, That's how you would put that. That's how I've seen similar examples in reading and docu uh, documents. And so, yeah, for example, you might find the documents say, oh, Yakabidoa, uh, Yakabidoa is somebody like somebody walking on the road or something like that. But uh, that's how that would be phrased up there. Nene means like road or way. O is like jumping on, jumping on. Sometimes O can be short uh, or it can be also meaning going to, jumping or walking towards something. Like if I put O Yakabido, like if I say Eva, Anjugo, Anjugo, O Yakabis, Yagabis, that means. Uh, the dog is walking to my house. I hope I'm making sense here. But anyways, that's where I would put in the knee, old Tosca, uh, that means like jumping on the road right there. That makes sense, Miss Lucinda? Yes, it does. Okay. okay. I think we're gonna end it right about here. And you guys have been a good class. And uh, 
uh, like I said, where that many old Toskido, I've seen other examples and documents, and that's how I've seen where the, that similar type of phrases were phrased. And so, as far as I know, that's uh, that would be the right way to put that. And um, well, right now it's just an opinion, but that's that's uh, where I would put that. But anyways, you guys were a good class tonight, and. Um, um, uh, the other teachers probably will be back next week to teach. She's a good teacher, very good. And um, um, and I want you guys to keep taking these classes and uh, let's all grow together in the language. And the Lord bless you guys. I'm going to let you guys go. Mado. 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 Mado, my Steve. Mado.